Lavrov says that Russia has submitted information to the U.S. which proves the involvement of Syrian opposition in the chemical attack in eastern Ghouta. One Iraqi woman was killed following the explosion of a motor shell launched by terrorists on the Iraqi consulate in Damascus. 23 Iraqis were killed and dozens injured following a series of explosions in the capital, Baghdad. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Irado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Rafari, has referred to the attempts of some states to focus during the General Assembly session and the talk about Syria, Iran, and the chemical weapons file instead of pushing forward the peace process and driving all parties towards Geneva too. He added that those who talked about Syria did not do this out of goodwill with the intention of pushing forward the peace process. Jafari said, those states should have instead pressured the parties that opposed the convention of the Geneva Conference and refused to take part in its meetings to change their stand and call on the armed terrorist groups which work in the interest of those states to go to Geneva too. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said he handed his American counterpart John Kerry during his meeting with him in New York recently information that confirms the Syrian opposition's involvement in the chemical attack near Damascus. In an interview with the Washington Post, Lavrov said there was very convincing evidence to the involvement of the opposition in Al Ghouta attack. Lavrov affirmed that an international resolution at the Security Council on the Syrian chemical weapons should be based on the Geneva Agreement and that he agreed with Kerry on adherence to such understanding. Lavrov asserted the need to hasten the convention of the Geneva II conference, which paves the way for a political solution to the crisis in Syria. He added that the mercenaries and jihadists who come from European countries and from Russia and America and who fight within the ranks of the terrorist gangs represent a source of danger for all, including their own countries. He said the Syrians are capable of solving their country's problems and determine their own future. The Russian Foreign Ministry has affirmed Russia's opposition to the attempts of some NATO countries to repeat the Libyan scenario in Syria. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov said during a conversation among experts held on the sideline of the International Exhibition of Weapons and Military Equipment that some NATO countries violate the principles set by the United Nations Security Council in an attempt to repeat the Libyan scenario, adding that Russia opposes such acts on the international arena. Head of the International Relations Committee at the Duma Council, Alexei Pushkov, had earlier affirmed that the double standard policy pursued by the USA is disgusting in a world based on equal rights, which the US itself alleges to be defending. Speaker of Iran's Shura Council Ali Larijani has called on regional and international parties that support terrorism in Syria to correct their strategic mistakes and stop backing terrorist takfiri groups which threaten the region's security and stability. Larijani stressed the need to utterly turn the page of threats of launching an aggression and war by the United States and the West against Syria and exert efforts to support Syria to restore security and stability. Larijani reiterated Iran's government's constant support to Syria in the various political and economic fields for enhancing the res resilience of its people in the face of the flagrant terrorist war for more than two and a half years.
One Iraqi woman was killed and others injured when a motor shell launched by terrorists hit the consulate building in Damascus. An Iraqi consulate source said that the shell fell on the visitors' section, killing a woman and wounding three, in addition to inflicting material damages. In Daraa, the army seized a terrorist car carrying large quantities of weapons and ammunition in the Mahajja village, including four Israeli Lao missiles, 36 motor shells, and various kinds of ammunition. The army also destroyed terrorist hideouts in Nawa, Inkhil, Al Naima, Atman, Adwan, Al Zarura, Ain al Basha, Al Hayran, and Ghadir al Bustan, killing and injuring a large number of armed men. The army also pursued a terrorist gang that tried to attack the customs ancient checkpoint, eliminating most of them, including Fadlallah al Masalme, Iskandar Salibi, Farzat Qtaifan, and Abdul Rahman Abdullah Hamoudi. In Aleppo suburbs, a large number of terrorists were killed or wounded in the villages of Qabtan al-Jabal, Al-Mansura, Jdaide, Kweris, and Rasm al-Aboud. The army also eliminated terrorist gatherings north of Ahmeme, south of Abu Jabbar in the western suburbs, as well as north of Al-Nayrab, Khan al-Asal, the surroundings of the central prison and Al-Kindi hospital, Azan al-Zibdiye, Bianon, Sheikh Saeed, Hayyan, and Zahra al shurfa east of Khan Tuman. Another army Army unit killed the members of a terrorist group and destroyed their weapons and equipment in Azizi, Kafarkar, and Al Muntar villages. In Iraq, 23 people were killed and 46 others injured following two explosions in two crowded markets in the capital, Baghdad. Iraqi sources said that one explosive device was planted in a street in ad dawra south of Baghdad, killing eight and injuring 16 others. Three explosive devices were detonated in Sabi' al-Bur area, north of the capital, killing 14 and injuring 30 others. It is to be mentioned that 670 people were killed since the beginning of the month following series of terrorist explosions. In occupied Palestine, Israeli settlers broke into Al-Aqsa Mosque via Bab al-Maghariba in occupied Jerusalem under the protection of Israeli police. Meanwhile, Palestinian citizens confronted a group of settlers allowed by Israeli police to break into the mosque and perform their rituals inside it. Israeli occupation forces conducted arrest and incursion campaigns during which dozens of Palestinians were arrested in Hebron and Beit Lahm in the West Bank. Now to latest business and market news, but after a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back. The State Ministry for Environment Affairs signed a memorandum of understanding with the Minister of Agriculture in the field of protecting the environment and sustainable energy in agricultural sector. The State Minister for Environment Affairs, Dr. Nazira Serkis, pointed out that the memorandum aims at setting the basics of cooperation and the implementations of laws and legislations concerning agriculture and environment. For his part, Minister of Agriculture Engineer Ahmed Al Qadiri stressed the importance of cooperation between the two ministries in overcoming difficulties which face agricultural sector. The director of the General Organization for Textile Industry asserted that the production quantity was estimated at 10.5 million Syrian pounds as the sale value exceeded 13.5 million Syrian pounds and the reserve reached about 9.5 million Syrian pounds. The director also said that the sale value for this year was up compared to the past years despite the hard conditions that are facing the organization and its subsidiaries as a result of the current crisis, noting that the export volume increased to reach 33.2 million Syrian pounds last month. The Minister of Agriculture has estimated the apples production for this season at 350,000 tons. The Assistant Manager of Production Department at the Ministry said that the planted area with apples reached about 52,000 hectares, noting that the marketing process has begun as the local markets were supplied by 8% of the total production of apples. 
U.S. crude oil traded near the lowest level in 12 weeks after U.S. inventories unexpectedly rose as demand slipped. Prices were little changed after sliding 0.5% earlier today. Brent for November settlement slid 4 cents to reach 108 U.S. dollars a barrel. European stocks declined as investors awaited a report that may show U.S. jobless claims rose last week and amid concern that the budget wrangling will lead to a government shutdown. Japanese shares also fell, the topics index retreating for the third day. The Jewelers' Assembly set the price of the 21 karat gold at 7,800 Syrian pounds per gram, declining 100 Syrian pounds since yesterday, while the Rashadi golden coin was set at 57,700 Syrian pounds and the English coin was set at 64,000 Syrian pounds. Finally, the yen fell for the first time in five days against the U.S. dollar as a speculation that the Japanese government will consider a corporate tax cut down demand for the relative safety of the currency. Japan's currency dropped at least 0.2% against all 16 of its major peers.